The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN Wednesday morning, just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. we got about 30 minutes to go until the start of trading, and you have markets holding up relatively well yet again. We're trading above 4,100. You're up 25 points in the S&P. We get some decent earnings overnight. We'll get into it in a moment. But s and is up 6 tenths percent right now. Yesterday, you make it to a high of about 4,140. Boy, quite a sell-off. You're talking about more than 50 points from the overnight lows made at about 11 p.m. Eastern time last night. And since that price level, you're talking about trading up almost 35 points. S&P's in positive territory. NASDAQ 100, you're above 13,000. You're up 6 tenths percent as well. Dow, up 5 tenths percent, 32,537. And you have the Russell right near 1,900, up 8 tenths percent for the Russell 2000 at 1898. Crude catches a little bit of a bid. We got OPEC increasing their production but by the smallest of margins imaginable basically you get an acceleration from 9350 up to 9650 just in the last couple hours we'll talk to our man teddy kegstad at 40 past the hour today uh we'll talk a little bit of crude we'll talk a little bit of forex markets along with notes and bonds crude up to 9650 and just like that though these are five-minute bars, man. Crude. Talk about some volatility. We're down a dollar from the highs that we set just 12 minutes ago. Gold contract. Quite an acceleration, a higher price yesterday early, and then quite a sell-off as we had some action in the Forex markets in particular. How about the note and bond market yesterday? We'll get into that as well. 1805 gold early in the day. I was looking at it last night, actually, because I was looking at gold late in the day. I was like, man, I can't believe we're even below 1775. I said, I could have sworn that we were trading you know, I think it was above 1800 when we were doing my show. And sure enough, it was. At 9 o'clock, you were above 1800 when I started it. And right as you came into 10 o'clock, we did get down to 1790 for the better part of the show. But man, you got some volatility in the gold market. We'll see where we go from there. And as I mentioned, notes and bonds. How about this move? And it's not stopping right now. You got the 10 year down another seven ticks right now. We are down. Yeah, more than two full points from where we were yesterday. I had to stop myself for a second, right? We're approaching 2.8% yield. We were approaching 2.5% yield yesterday. Mammoth, mammoth moves in a big way uh, as you get rates rising about three tenths percent. We take a look at the daily. And what we do is the acceleration that you had began on March 7th. We've been in a downtrend, but that's where things really started to accelerate. You had the 10-year trading at 129. You drive down to 114. From there, you bounce just above where we were in May. You make a high. What was it? 122.02 is the high there. And just like that, we're more than two points off of that. And that was a 50% retracement of the entire move lower we had since March. You got lows out there of about 114. The area that we bounced a bit is at least 117 and a half about. So you're still almost two uh, to two and a half points away from where that 10 year was chopping around for a bit. What was that? 3%, a little bit above 3% at that point. Nonetheless, you go from 3.5% to 2.5% to 2.8% all in the span of six weeks, let alone the drop we had from March. As notes and bonds, there's a lot of Fed speak. We'll get into that. Um, but we get non-farm payrolls in 48 hours, less than, folks. That's a big number, and we get a lot of big numbers in earnings as well. Let's kick it off and check in on some of them. PayPal, big numbers for PayPal. They got some big buybacks going on. PayPal jumps from 88 bucks. We're trading above 100. Now this thing's been punished in a big way, man. Down from 296 in September. Down from 310 about a year ago just more than a year ago so you're going to pop above 100 for the context of this chart about 101 is where we're trading at right now you know you'd really like to see some strength we came into the year just shy of 200 bucks for paypal trading at about 101 for their earnings all right let's jump around to some of the headlines we got pulled up and we'll kick it off with oil opec agrees to raise output next month at a much slower pace the group will add 100,000 barrels a day of supply to the market, 
significantly less than on the alliance added in July and August. How much did they add in July and August? 600,000. Yeah, they're more than comfortable with oil trading above 100 bucks. Why would they flood the market? It would make no sense, right? They can't let things get too out of whack. And it's pretty out of whack at 100, but pushing things up to 200. So what do they do? They release it in July and August, knowing 600,000 barrels isn't going to bring the price back down to $60. So you know what? We're at 95 to to $100 right now. Uh, and we're okay with that. The deal may offer little respite for consumers suffering the internet uh, inflationary squeeze of high prices. Yeah. So that's a bit of the sell-off. Now, the 23-nation alliance, okay, check this out, would divide the increase proportionally between members with only the Saudis and the United Arab Emirates able to bolster production. Just a fraction of the group's promised increases have reached the world market. So that's just what they're proposing and saying they will do. As they've come to market, they can't even keep up with that usually as just the Saudis and the UAB, UAE is able to keep up. No discussions about whether the OPEC and its allies would keep increasing production beyond September. Uh, and I heard one take on this this morning on Bloomberg saying that this would basically account for the Saudi portion being about 26,000 barrels that they would push out. And that would be basically one Suez tanker a month extra. On a world global scale, that puts in context that the Saudis sending out one extra tanker a month is what they just came to. Uh, this, of course, after President Biden was over there. There's going to be a lot of talk because they almost couldn't have done less uh, in that market. And that's probably part of the reason that you're seeing a little bit of a spike in the crude contract today, jumping over to that market again. We're trading at 95.18. Great day to talk to Teddy. Man, we've had so much volatility across the board, whether it's crude, notes and bonds, right? Teddy with some great action on the note and bond, man. You check out that action. Quite the reversal in the 30-year, man. You're talking about almost four full points. Almost four full points on the 30-year. We're down another 29 ticks today. Let's jump over to the VIX. VIX right now, trading at 2307. Quite the acceleration into last Friday, 2121. We're up to 2468 yesterday, sitting at about 23. Still a pretty elevated level on historical basis. All right, what else are we going to jump around to? Uh, China real estate. Yeah, let's start off with some of the other companies with earnings. Moderna, decent earnings. They were trading higher this morning. Uh, they write off $500 million in expiring COVID shots. That's unfortunate for many reasons. Uh, $4.7 billion in sales for the quarter, a 9% increase over the same period last year. They make 524, though, a drop from the second quarter. They write off 500 million for the shots. They also lost 180 million, 84 million in vaccine purchase commitments. And they had uh, 131 in expenses for unused manufacturing equipment. It's got to be crazy volatile trying to manage a business as you ebb and flow with the demand for those vaccines. I'm jumping over to theirs. Moderna up to 169 from 160. The one thing I do always think about this equity was I think, uh, was it Merck got out of this thing at some point, I think in the third quarter of 2020, they had a big stake in it. They decided to sell it somewhere in the third quarter, I think of 2020 for 50, 60, $70, something like that. Stock runs up to 500, they look like fools. It drives back down to almost 100. They don't look like fools. Um, so probably not going to hit the lottery back to 500 anytime soon on Moderna. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back. Talk to our man Kevin Hanks from TD Ameritrade Network. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps right now up 22 points, trading at 41.16. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time, right here on Tiger TV, the program Fast Market from the TD Ameritrade Network with your hosts, Kevin Hinks and Tom White and the team at TD Ameritrade Network. They break down the entire day's action, folks. They walk you through hypothetical trades every single day using options. If you want to learn about the market, you want to learn how to trade options, you want to learn how to understand them, please check out the program at 12 noon Eastern time. Kevin Hinks. I got one question for you. I hit you up yesterday and I said, what's happening with notes and bonds? And man, we had a big 24 hours since I talked to you yesterday. What's happening with notes and bonds, man? Well, I think you've got a lot of Fed speakers out there working the airwaves with uh, saying that, you know, basically uh, that they got it, you know, the, that the bond market's getting it wrong. I think the bond market, you know, is is adjusting rates are you know ten year yields moving back up to two seven nine here still not anywhere near where it was but yeah the the uh, overall rally in the economy uh, some of the good economic data or not horrible economic data that we've seen I think Nancy Pelosi looks like she's now exiting uh, Taiwan so that's good news. Uh, I think that is easing some of the fears in the market of some geopolitical event. I thought that that was uh, more of more le less of a risk than the market thought, frankly. So, yeah, I think you've got a drift. Remember, you've got a big number one data point of the week or, or the month coming up here on Friday morning. So, uh, you've got a lot of Fed members out there banging the table saying inflation is higher than we want and they've still got work to do. And so not surprising that yields have firmed up here a little bit and, and jumped. I mean, you know, they were below, Tommy, below 2.6 at one time yesterday morning. So I saw 2.57 
on my thinker swim platform. So yeah, uh, a little bounce here in yields. We'll sell off in bonds. I ask you the important questions, and they're almost an impossible one, man. So I appreciate the explanation because if anybody can explain, folks, how you have rates going, just like you said. From, I thought, you know, maybe 2.5 was the next marker, Kevin. We were so close yesterday. And just like that, we're at 2.8, the conversation, man. In one day, three-tenths percent in the 10-year when it's just such an important um, yield and interest rate across of our economy in, in one day. We go forward on earnings, Kevin. You mentioned Friday, pretty remarkable. We're only 48 hours out from that event, which the market will look for. We get non-farm payrolls. Uh, we have earnings season marching on. Some decent earnings from PayPal last night. Airbnb is yeah. a little lower. This is still an important week in earnings, even after the big ones last week. What are you guys talking about uh, at, on Fast Market at 12 today? Today we're going to look, yeah, you're right. We're in a little bit of a, a lull here after a, a really good, pretty good high-profile day yesterday, Tommy, with AMD, PayPal, Airbnb, Starbucks. Uh, so today we're going to look at eBay in the first segment of the show, uh, the the you know the sales platform. Then we'll look at um, bookings, uh, b bookings holdings in the third segment, and then like Folio will do an, a, a presentation on Penn National Gaming, Tommy. Ooh, Penn National Gaming. That catches my ear, man. Uh, I like a little gaming, a little gambling here and there. Keep it uh, safe and respectable. But in, pretty interesting. They just passed, Kevin, uh, I believe, in Massachusetts. Got plenty of friends, of course, in Boston talking about uh, they're going to have online gaming, maybe even gambling, maybe even coming down by this NFL season. Uh, they can even bet on college athletics, but nothing in state in Massachusetts as they get excited. The run this thing has had in both directions, man. And they are the owners of Barstool Sports, among many different tracks across the country as well. Uh, uh, but always an interesting one, 36 bucks. I know some of those stocks, DraftKings as well, I think gotten a little bit of a lift, yeah, this week, maybe having to do with uh, good old Massachusetts. There's plenty of gamblers in Massachusetts, Kevin. Uh, jumping to the fan favorite Reddit, uh, HKD, Kevin. Can you give us a quick take on the craziness and what you'd say to anybody going on in this equity as it approaches what three four hundred billion dollars in market cap running up to twenty five fifty five? Uh, I got it up on the Thinkorswim platform. What's your take on some of this craziness in the Reddit uh, phenomenon? Hits again. Well, Tommy, you know when you look at AMC, when you look at some of these names, when you look at some of these, you know, meme stocks, you got to be careful with them. Why they're going up? The reasons that that they're doing that now. There's still ability to trade them, right? Just make sure your long-term goal is I, – here's the way I compare it, Tommy. When you're trading a meme stock, right, it's like a, a game of musical chairs. At some point, the music's going to stop, and you better have a chair ready to go in terms of managing your risk and controlling your risk and things like that. So just make sure the reason it's moving – and, I, and this is not stock specific. This is all meme stocks. Throw any stock in that category into this. Make sure they're moving for the right reason and make sure your risk is controlled and defined. Because at the end of the day, a stock moving for the wrong reason, like a short squeeze or for some reason like that, it's destined to go back to fundamentals eventually. It, when? I don't know. But it eventually will, Tommy. It's a great take. I appreciate you educating us all, man. I agree with a lot of what you said. And, you know, folks, if you are trading these, I mean, where do you put the risk on something at 2000 that was just at 50 bucks? You better be prepared for that thing to be back down to 50 bucks, if not even lower. If you're ever buying this thing at 2000 um, yeah, pretty remarkable to say the least. Well, Kevin, we appreciate the time as always, man. We'll be watching at 12 noon Eastern time today. And uh, you have a great one. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great day. Always a pleasure. Folks, tune in today. They'll be talking about AMD. They'll be talking about Penn National Gaming, that gambling sector, man. Uh, and yeah, to you Massachusetts listeners and viewers out there, if you weren't aware, you're getting online gambling uh, come, I think, the NFL season. They just passed it. They got to figure out the details, but all uh, I'm pretty sure they're going to try and get that done by NFL season because they want the tax dollars that are going to come with it. You do get to bet on college athletics as well, just not in-state. 
probably a good thing uh, to not have gambling on college athletics. Even though college athletics is transforming pretty quickly with the name, image, and likeness uh, deals that some of these players are getting to a professional league, nonetheless, it's still a college athletic team that you'd be gambling on. My big gripe as an online poker player is that they are not somehow including online poker. I imagine, uh, as Kevin said, it'd be a matter of when, not if, applied to a different context, but... Online poker will come. It's just unfortunate that you're going to be able to bet on. I mean, imagine in Massachusetts, you can bet bet on a Rhode Island sporting event for college kids, and you can't play a game of online poker for five bucks. There's my online poker rant, but it makes zero sense, folks. And horse gambling has been legal forever, okay, which makes no sense when you go through the industry. Horse gambling, you can sign up tomorrow and put a credit card down and probably spend every credit you have um, in there. So doesn't make any sense you can you know waste your entire credit card on a horse race five states away somehow but you can't play online poker do you know why that works folks lobbyists that's it online online horse betting that's a tough one to beat the vig as well and online sports betting folks you know uh you spend you know one of the coolest parts about online gambling all right <laughs> to, to really bring it you always want to have your risk in check is that you can gamble for a dollar you can you can play a poker tournament for a dollar you can bet on a horse race for 50 cents or something like that you can bet on a sporting event for like 50 cents you go to vegas or i go to the hard rock in tampa they don't let me play five dollar poker tournaments folks i think the cheapest one's like a hundred bucks and then you're getting reamed by the rake the rake and then if you got to go up to like two or three hundred dollars as opposed to five we'll be right back with you of looming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. You get the S&Ps. We open up 21 points. NASDAQ 100 up 76. The Dow up 162. And just to finish that conversation, because I was rushed coming into the break there, uh, the point of it was when you were playing online, specifically poker, all right, poker is a game where you got 10 people sitting at a table. You have a person that you have to pay to deal the game. That person dealing the game is usually get a very small amount of money and they work for the tips from the table. Uh, always tip your dealer when you win a pot, folks. That's how it works when you're playing a cash game at the casino. But you play it online and all of a sudden the barrier to entry is much less because the casino could offer you a $5 poker game. Okay, folks? But they would have to charge you like $5 to play it. So you could never, ever win. That's the point. Whereas online, it's just a computer that's running the server, that's running your game. So you can play a dollar tournament where they're taking a dime, a 10 cent usually, which is pretty standard, a 10% VIG on maybe a tournament. So you can play a 25 cent tournament they have sometimes that are rake free for people with no money in their account. So on a Friday night, you play a $5 tournament with a thousand people in it, and maybe you're paying 50 cents to the house. Well, the house got 50 cents from every 5,000 players. They just made $2,500 to run that tournament on another server, which is very profitable. But in a casino, you can never run a $5 tournament with 1,000 people. Do you know what the costs are of running a 1,000 person tournament in a casino? You'd have to enter five to the prize pool and then pay the house 10 or 15 bucks to run that tournament per person. Anyway, so online poker, you can actually play it at a much less level. You can lose a lot less money. Being from Tampa and seeing the Hard Rock folks, the Hard Rock, the amount of money that people gamble in the Hard Rock, even on poker, is extreme because the, the house needs to make their money, so they need to keep the games at a certain elevated level of about $100 to $200 buy-in so that they can take 5 to 10% of that. And on cash games, they're taking 5% of the the. Uh, gamble every hour which is a lot of money and people just don't see it because it's taken out of the pot versus actually having to pay okay back to the markets s and p's we're up 24 points the markets hold up where we open you got crude look at that acceleration man up and down and all around crude's up to 96.50 we're back to 94.24 one final comment on that opec deal before i jump away where are i do i have it up yes i do uh so they're going to increase. OPEC is in, increasing production by 100,000 barrels. That's their goal. Number one, they usually don't reach that status because that's proportional across all members. And only the Saudis and the UAE actually are the ones that have delivered. The Saudis have ramped up to 10.78 million barrels a day last month. Okay, 10.78 million barrels a day. And they're going to add 100,000 for the whole group, which means the Saudis would add about 26,000. 26,000 is what they would add. And they're, and they're pushing out 10.78 million barrels a day right now. So keep that in mind. Uh, oil all over the place, though, on a volatile morning. And as we have the markets catching a little bit of a bid, let's check around to some of those stocks that had earnings last night. PayPal. Uh, with their numbers up 12%. As I mentioned, they have a buyback program out there, a big one, along with some decent earnings. You jump over to Airbnb on the flip side of that, trading lower by 5.6%. They do catch a bid, though, when they open. Uh, thought I had that Airbnb. No. Okay. I'll have to go back. I had an article up with them. Lighter than expected bookings forecast for the quarter. So that's what hits Airbnb. I uh, wanted to jump to an interesting Amazon article. I have two up here. So first things, a couple Amazon, and I am as am Amazon shareholder in longer-term retirement portfolio, folks. We all are if you have a, you know, an S&P or something like that. But even this equity up to 136 on their decent recent earnings. Uh, their ad business, one of the big highlights for Amazon. And if you look at it, you know, they're their own ecosystem, right? So they aren't going to get phased out of their own ecosystem's advertising compared to the other advertisers that are dealing with the update from Apple, okay, that limits how much information and targeting those companies can do. And the growth rate is showing it. Amazon at 18%, Snap, a surprising 13% to the upside. And then you see Google, Pinterest, Twitter, and Facebook actually decreasing on that number. Now, the one I was going to get to, though, check out this story. Uh, Lollipop's hustle on Amazon costs family candy business millions. So, dumb, dumb lollipops. We're all probably familiar in our childhood, right? Rogue sellers are ordering dumb dumbs from Sam's Club 
and resell them at a markup, undercutting the candy company itself and what they're selling it on Amazon. Now, first of all, that's some pretty decent margins, man, that they're getting on Amazon. If you're telling me that they're selling in Sam's Club at a price that allows people to buy that product on Sam's Club's website, then resell it on Amazon, which is what they're doing. It's pretty cool. Uh, at a lower price point than the market, than the company itself is making. Now, the crazy part of it all is uh, they're shipped directly from Walmart's Sam's Club. So these people literally take the order and order it on Sam's Club itself, ships directly from Sam's Club to the people. Uh, price arbitrage scheme is what's happening on the marketplace. Uh, and sellers get it done. They scour the internet for products with lower prices offered than actually on Amazon. They post the items on the website and wait for someone to place an order, uh, purchase the product from that retailer, and it ships directly from the reseller. They don't even touch the product itself. It is a violation of Amazon policy, which pro prohibits merchants from shipping products from other retailers but the perpetrators are betting that they'll elude detection amid the clutter of companies' vast web store, and it looks like they are. So the 500 pack is about 15 bucks, and Amazon, where they sell it exclusively, a 400 pack for about 26 bucks. Isn't that crazy? So Sam's Club sells a 500 pack for 15 bucks, and there that same company is selling a 400 pack for 26 dollars. They can charge 25 on Amazon and pocket about six bucks after subtracting the fees due to the $10 price difference. Margin-wise, it's huge. It's amazing that's going on. Uh, but nonetheless, one of the things Amazon's gonna have to deal with, complaining to Amazon no longer works because by the time they have suspended a seller, they've popped up to replace them. It just keeps going. Yeah, that's always gonna happen on a company that big if you're offering the product at such a premium that you're selling it to Sam's Club members at a deep discount from what you're selling it on Amazon itself. Sam's Club's a great deal though. It is. So we got a membership in the house and we should go there even more often than we do. All right, jumping around to a little crypto. MicroStrategy. Their CEO is now just the chairman. They're splitting the roles. He's going to focus on Bitcoin while the chairman focuses, uh, excuse me, while the new CEO focuses on actually running the company. He's going to continue to serve as executive chairman. Sailor, he founded the company. Uh, they are in some big losses for Bitcoin to the tune of about $1 billion. Yeah. Uh, and I think they got, how many Bitcoin do they have on their rolls? It's it's quite a staggering amount when you look at the run this has had. Did they say it in here? Yeah, 129,000 Bitcoin. Whew. That's a tough one. He began investing in the summer of 2020, saw it as a hedge against inflation, wrong many people wrong in his defense you could have said the same thing about gold right did not work out the company shares surged that year by more than 170 percent but fell about two percent yeah they're uh a little bit lower to say the least mstr let's see how they're opening up up 5.3 percent there's a chart for you up to 13.15 back to 295 stay tuned folks we'll be back with our man teddy kegstad talking some forex crude and DFNN bonds and notes. has been your trusted source of analysis for bonds metals stocks commodities and options for years and we are happy to announce that we are bringing that same caliber of analysis for the forex market teddy kegstad has 30 plus years of experience in forex trading commodity risk management forex hedging volatility and so much more teddy releases his weekly tiger forex report every monday morning with elite coverage of all major currency pairs including the dxy euro dollar pound dollar aussie dollar dollar yen dollar swiss franc and so much more teddy will recommend specific trades when the market presents them and provide updates throughout the week when warranted for the month of july inaugural members the tiger forex report will receive 25 percent off the monthly subscription for as long as they're subscribed just use promo code teddy 25 to lock in the added savings this offer is good only for the month of july so do not miss your opportunity to save on the Tiger Forex Report. TFNN, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, 
as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the fund is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&P right now up 30 points, trading at 41.23. We jump around. We got the euro, euro US dollar right now. You're trading at about 101.69. Uh, when we talked to Teddy on Monday, man, we we're above 120.1024. Uh, the yen with some action. And we're going to talk to Teddy a little bit about the note and bond market. Teddy Kegstat, what's going on with the note and bond market, man? Wow, we got some good stuff to talk about today. And I'll tell you what, the people who have been reading the the, uh, the uh, Tiger Forex report must be happy with the numbers, that's for sure. You've so, had some great um, calls, man. So even from the conversation we had on Monday in terms of right. uh, notes and bonds uh, with the letter. So congrats, man. And, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, let's get into it. So where, where do we go, man? We got oil, we got notes and bonds, we got the market. Where do you kick it off? Let's, let, well, let's talk about the interest rates first. So the bonds spiked high. They rejected our upside target uh, zone. We, they pierced it by a few ticks, and now they're three handles lower. So I think you really have to key off of what happened yesterday as far as the interest rates and also with the dollar index. Either we put in the short, either this correction is over right now for the short term, and we're going to start getting back to the regular trend at hand, or we're going to take it out and we're going to extend this correction. You know, and I think right now we put in a short term top in the bond market, a short term bottom in the dollar market. You know, and that's going to definitely uh, be what we're going to have to follow over the next couple of days as we head into unemployment. And the question is, will unemployment be the accelerator and put us back onto these trends, meaning dollar bulls and an um, interest rate bear? Or is unemployment going to shake up the market and all of a sudden we have a lift in bonds, meaning uh, lower rates and also a, a dollar that gets under pressure again? And I think that's the inflection point we'll see. But right now, I think I'm, I'm right now I'm bearish on uh, bonds and I'm bullish on the dollar. So would that be looking for, you know, you wait for Friday's number? I mean, in theory, you already have some Fed speak out here today, right, mm -hmm. saying 2.5%, 2.6 was probably not where we should be in terms of what the market was reading from Chairman Powell or maybe expecting. Uh, we're back mm -hmm. to 2.8% on the 10-year real quick. Uh, so that would maybe lean towards we get some of that data. I know, I know you're saying the data is going to drive it. But really looking towards the Fed probably still needing to hike and inflation persisting if that if that scenario might play out with us hiking interest rates, given the dollar more strength and continuing that trend. Would that be Correct. right? Correct. Nice. Mm -hmm. uh, crude crude oil this morning. So OPEC with the, the smallest of margins increase uh, of 100,000 barrels a day. Crude pops and then we get a little bit of a give back. We've held kind of that critical area of, of whether mm -hmm. it's 93, 94, 95 bucks on the lower side of there. What's your take on, on that crude acceleration today? I think it's just a pep rally moment from the news, to be quite honest with you. I think that's all the selling and pressure is right now. I would be very cautious with it. I think that the numbers, if you, when you really see what actually gets delivered and how things come to market, I think it's going to be bullish on oil still. I think this is just a news-driven, just a little bit of 
puffery, you know, to kind of p- help, help keep the prices down. But it's not the reality is they're capped out. They're, they're not going to be able to produce to any. There's no way they can increase production to meet demand, especially moving forward and moving, especially going into winter time. Yeah. And it seems like um, and you make a great point because uh, I was reading an article this morning. Bloomberg said, you know, uh, of the increases they've had, really, it's only the Saudis and the UAE that really hit that number. And you have all right. the other members that don't. Um, right. And then you put those numbers in terms of where they end up on 100,000 barrels, and you have the president just going over to the kingdom. Uh, he can't mm-hmm. be a happy camper this morning. So it seems like <laughs> the slightest of what they could do as opposed to doing nothing, right? Maybe with him right. being over there. So you take sure. that for what it's worth, man. Not exactly a, a, a price acceleration to the downside. How about uh, the dollar yen, Teddy? We've had some action in, in pretty decent in both directions right now for the mm-hmm. dollar yen. We're back to 133.66. We made it to 130 and change yesterday. Uh, mm-hmm. What's your take on the dollar yen? I'm, I'm bullish right now. Like I said, at least moving into unemployment, I am bullish to dollar, especially in markets like the U.S. dollar yen and the U.S. dollar Swiss. They're the ones that had the most extreme correction. OK, so I think that they just when I mean, you look at how markets go out and they come in just on a volatility basis. I'm very bullish on the yen and the Swiss right now. So and where would you look forward to the upside? Can it really challenge almost 140 again? Um, it's remarkable. It was there July 14th after trading sure. lower. Okay, well, let's say oh, let's say that I'm right on the correction being over. If that's the case, then yeah, we're going to take out the high in the U.S. dollar yen. I would look okay. for I would look for parity in U.S. dollar Swiss, and I would look for every bit of p- testing 140. I think we could cool. challenge that, and that would be in a short amount of time too. Remember, we cool. have two months to a Fed meeting, and if if, the, if we can get through Friday and, and keep this trend intact, then that means we'll have confirmed that the correction is over in in those in the broader markets. Yeah, it's going to be interesting, man. Friday's number, which is crazy, it's less than 48 hours from right now. And then we get CPI next week. It seems like those two big numbers alone might really shed some light on what's going mm-hmm. on here. And, uh, and and if the trends make it through there, man, what else is stepping in the way, um, at least for the foreseeable future with those two numbers? Mm-hmm. Pretty important right now with what's coming down the line. And if CPI uh, is higher, you know that the Fed's going to have to raise rates. Oh, if CPI is higher, folks, theory. watch out. <laughs> like, seriously. Yeah. Um, because it is remarkable that for all the talk we got out of the chairman's last press conference, the last data point we have is 9.1% for CPI, but it's so dated that it gives all of this room. You know, it's June data, even the number we're going to get is July. They're not meeting again until next month, September. Um, so much data coming at us. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. What else? Anything else in terms of waiting for Friday's action that you're watching? I mean, as a Forex trader, do you just kind of mm-hmm. keep those trends that you talked about in place and then we wait for Friday and, and you take a look at what happens after the jobs number? Yeah, right now I'm using, I'm playing just a pure technical thing because the way I'm looking at it is if the if the markets reverse and all of a sudden like for instance the dollar index the low that they hit yesterday was it was a key level you know just like the bonds the high in the bonds yesterday was a 50% move from the March high down to the recent swing low of of a month and a half ago so that's a really really big pivot point so like I said either we've hit the end of the correction or whatever puts it propels us through that is going to surge us to extend that leg higher in a big way which is technically driven because remember we've been talking about we have a divergence in the interest rate market versus the fed you know rates are going up bond prices are going up how is that possible you know so there, there's yes. a, there's a rubber band effect that eventually one of them has to give either the fed stops raising rates and goes with the market or the market has to snap back you can only be at a premium or a discount in that spread between you know and also you look at the interest rate spreads in, in themselves look between the euro dollar the interest rate versus the you know the libor all these things are are now at, at, at like inflection points that are crazy you haven't seen the differentials like this in a long time yesterday the 10 year was almost tick for tick with the 30 year at the beginning of the day that's a big deal most people don't look at the different you know usually the, yes. the bonds are like you know three to two ticks or maybe sometimes two to one you know but you don't have them one to one that's i mean we're literally the bonds are up 20 and the, and the notes are up 20 ticks that just does not happen you know and yeah. when you do somehow those spreads someone the, the money is going to move and there was no blow-ups at any any brokerage houses usually the only time you have those occurrences is when you have someone where they have a big margin call and they have to dump one month or something or with something yeah. like that it gets a little you know? distorted from one action of, correct of, of, yeah uh, you know, if you take a look at that 30 year as well, man, you put it on a monthly, go back to 1999, the trend line that mm-hmm. it is bouncing off, right? It 
bashes through that trend line, and all it's done, folks, is it's come back and just tested that line, and maybe that's where it goes lower. Uh, our man mm-hmm. Bud Rolfs, the channel master and old uh, technician at TFNX, he'd say you break the trend, right, and then you wait for it to come back and test that trend. Right. Boy, if that's what it did, watch out, folks, on the 30th. Right. Teddy, we Fun appreciate stuff. it as always, man. Uh, you have a great one, and we'll talk you to too. you next Wednesday. Take care. Thanks. You too. Folks, check out the Tiger Fork right on the front page of TFNN. Teddy says some great calls. Check it out. Sign up for it over the break. We'll be right back in three minutes, folks. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Checking out on the market, and we have an acceleration to higher prices here. Pulling up the numbers, you're talking about an S&P's up 31 points, NASDAQ 100. Check out that bid. We're talking about the highs of Tuesday and Monday, though, coming into an area, 13,100, folks. What did we hit yesterday? Did we, like, almost get to within a point? Within three points, and we just got above that level, 13,108 is the high of Monday. As markets accelerate, let's check in some of those FANG stocks, see how they're moving. Look at Apple up 1.8%, Amazon up 2.5%, continuing the run, Microsoft up 1.3%, Google shares up almost 2%, man, Meta, what are they doing today, up 3.5%, how's ARK, all those growth stocks, look at this acceleration, up 3.8%, Zoom shares up 2.2%, DraftKings catches a bid, up 4.3%, Roku got pummeled last week, yeah, Roku's in trouble, man, 
down 1.9%. Look at it. Why is Roku down 1.9%? Everything else is accelerating. Disney's up 2.6%. Uber continuing the acceleration up another 3.5% today after being up like 19% yesterday. Uh, some of the other movers today, Match Group, not so much, man. I'm not sure what's going on, but as they put it here, they are, let's see, lower than expected quarterly results. Top line growth will be flat during the second half of the year. Uh, oh, and they're, so the CEO of Tinder is leaving. Well, either way, that stock. Second, not longer term. Yeah, watch out, man. That's crazy. How is an online dating site back to where it was trading at in 2018? And I say a dating site, they own almost all of them, uh, the dating sites, that equity. And what else do I want to take a look at? Uh, Starbucks. Yeah, Starbucks, they were a little bit higher last night, I believe. And they give back a little bit. You're up 1.7% right now for Starbucks shares. Let's see how Mac my micro strategy is trading. Up 7.5%. Bitcoin's up about 500 bucks. All right, folks. Look at this market. Can't hold a good market down, man. S&P is up 35 points right now. Stay tuned, folks. We got a man, Basil Chapman. He's coming up next. And I should have gotten there, folks. Go sign up for Basil's webinar, folks. It's a week from today. It's five hours. You'll learn, learn his whole methodology. You get his newsletter as well. The newsletter starts immediately. Well worth the $2.95 with the newsletter included. Check it out on the front page, TFNN. Basil's up next. Have a great Wednesday, everybody.